This video provides a quick overview about the AIC BIM Body Knowledge Delphi Study Report. This presentation was originally made at 11th BIM Academic Symposium in Boston back in April. In this presentation, we're going to provide an overview about the Delphi process. We're going to talk about the consensus evaluation criteria we established, and we're going to talk about the data we gathered and some um, analysis we conducted. We're going to show you some quick results and findings, some interesting patterns we uh, we, are, we were able to identify, and we're going to talk about the future development of this AIC BIM body knowledge research, including the development of the dictionary and the specifications that will provide guidance for users to actually implement the BIM body knowledge. The DEFA process is pretty standardized, and we followed the literature review uh, very well. Um, so we're going to um, talk about the overall BIM body knowledge classification categorization and the panel selection process. We're going to discuss a little bit about the three rounds of DEFA surveys we conducted, and we're going to um, also show you the final results of the data collection. The BIM body of knowledge classification categorization basically is a framework that trying to holistically represent the knowledge in BIM implementation. And to, be, uh, to make it more specific, we're looking at a couple of different um, dimensions. The first dimension we're looking at the level of performance, uh, level of implementation, including plan it, coordinate it, manage it, and do it. Then we'll look at different industry sectors, the roles of different users, including the designers, contractors, facility manager, and operators, as well as consultant and generalist. We also looked at the different levels of performance, including entry, middle, and full performance level. And finally, we'll examine different types of knowledge, including the organizational specific knowledge, as well as the project specific knowledge. To further elaborate on the um, classification and the categorization dimensions, the level, levels of implementation trying to address the business decision-making hierarchy on BIM uptake and utilization, descending from the planet coordinated, which really examining the macro level, inter and intra-organizational level, then to manage it and do it, which look at majorly macro level, project and the task level. The roles of users uh, is trying to acknowledge the com commonality and disparity of BIM users across the eco industry sectors. Uh, we, use, uh, we actually re use the reference to the Omni class table 33 disciplines. And also look at levels of performance, which indicates the stratification of performance depending on the educational background as well as professional experience. And it suggests the progression of performance will be from entry, middle to full. And then last but not least, we look at the types of knowledge. The TLK inherits the concept of knowledge management in the eco industry and, hi and highlight uh, its project-based nature. As a matter of fact, projects are also identified as a temporary organization. So um, both organizational general knowledge as well as project-specific knowledge are both critical constituents of the BIM body technology framework. Now, the level of performance, we're trying to explain this to our, our panelists, uh, and we utilize the concepts of Boolean taxonomy, which is used to uh, assess the cognitive dimensions of learning. So for the entry level, we're really looking at the performance expected for users with a bachelor degree or equivalent technical education, we're looking at a cognitive learning at remembering and understanding level. For middle level, we're looking at performance expected for users that meet entry level qualification plus three to five years of experience in BIM practices. Then we're looking at the applying and analyzing cognitive levels of learning. Finally, uh, full performance. Performance really are expected for users that meet middle level qualification plus five or greater years of experience in BIM practices. So looking at people, uh, the BIM users, how they actually conduct evaluation and creation. This list of BIM body knowledge line items, as you see here, are the um, product of the minute workshop conducted in the at ninth BIM Academic Symposium back in 2015. This is actually the foundation of our DEFA um, study. At a different level of implementation, we come up with different numbers of line items there. So for instance, planet including 27 line items, coordinate including six line items, manager has uh, 21, and do it has 13. Um, the participants just went trying to highlight their contribution from the um, participants of the BIM uh, Academic Symposium plus Job Task Analysis Mini Workshop at the 9th uh, ARC Academic Symposium. Now, 
To give an overview about the AIC BIM biotechnology demo stack process, we provide this little flow chart here. So back in April 2015, we provide, we created this uh, BIM biotechnology line items there, and we created this kind of uh, categorization and classification system, uh, as you saw a moment ago. Then we'll start the Delphi panel selection process that used the demographics and qualification survey, and uh, that was done between this July and September 2015. The first round of the Delphi study starts on, in November 2015 and uh, completed in December 2015. And we were asking the um, participants, actually trying to brainstorm the relevance of the pre-established BIM biotechnology line items there and uh, get a uh, relevance checking. The second round is provide a rating and consensus evaluation. Uh, in this round, we were able to identify some BIM biotechnology line items that actually achieved early consensus and early agreements, which they will be actually taking out from the survey and uh, they will be actually um, you know, uh, set as the early consensus or agreements items which don't need further evaluation. In round three, all the BIM body knowledge line items who, which did not accomplish the early consensus or early agreements will re-rate it and re-evaluate it for consensus. And uh, um, after round three, we find out the results are pretty consistent already. So we um, uh, finished the Delphi study at round three, which produced the final levels of agreements and some um, very comprehensive um, descriptive statistics for the in my knowledge line items. Let's go back to the Delphi panel selection criteria. Uh, in order to actually choose the uh, qualified professional, and we went through a pretty comprehensive uh, demographics and qualification survey, and the criteria included the current professional undertaking and job functions, the industry sector represented, the typical phase of project delivery involvement, and the years of professional experience, the educational background, as well as the geographical location. So this is a fairly um, general representation of the qualifications we're looking at. We had a lot of BIM managers and BIM directors who actually participate in this survey. And uh, um, most of those companies, or well, actually the participants are from the private sector. And uh, they had a good representation of different sizes of companies. They had a different uh, levels of degrees accomplished. And they have been involved in different kinds of disciplines as well as different phases of a project life cycle. So we'll say we had a really good combination of diversity in our DAFA panels. So there is a total of 19 panelists, uh, panelists was originally selected. And uh, however, unfortunately, only 23 of them had the time and uh, you know was able to actually go through the whole study. And they are actually being acknowledged here. Now, the first round, which was conducted between November and December 2015, really is looking at the relevance checking and expansion on existing BIM body of knowledge items there using the Qualtrics online survey. And uh, there's no new BIM body of knowledge items were added. And also, fortunately, there was no um, existing pre-established BIM uh, items that was deducted either. The second round is trying to evaluate uh, or actually trying to establish the initial consensus on the importance of the BIM body of knowledge items via five point Likert type scales. And we use a very important, which is five point, important, four point, somewhat important, three points, somewhat unimportant, two point, and very unimportant, one point. We do not use a neutral uh, scale because in the literature view, they actually uh, kind of like um, indicate the neutral level of Likert does not encourage cognitive efforts. So that's why we actually do not use a neutral um, scale. And also, you know, to determine the early consensus of early strong agreements with established combinatory um, multi-criteria evaluation criteria for level of agreement, we spend a lot of time for our literature review. Uh, we establish this table of level agreements. So we established uh, seven different type of tiers of consensus um, or level agreements including the early consensus, early strong agreement, and the consensus of strong agreement, partial agreements, split disagreement, and total disagreement. Uh, as you see, the major uh, statistics we are actually looking at, including the standard deviation, the interquartile range, and uh, also the uh, percent score, as well as the percent score combined. 
um, we we'll provide a really comprehensive explanation on those yeah, variation criteria in our report. Right? We don't, which we, I don't really want to repeat here. So this is an example of the combinatory, um, combinatory multi-criteria LLO evaluation process for the two results there. As you see, for each of those different scenarios, uh, we actually was able to generate, uh, was able to actually gather all the um, critical uh, descriptive statistics here, and uh, we were able to actually identify whether or not a bin bottom knowledge line and it has accomplished early consensus or early uh, strong agreement. If so, they will be marked. Uh, otherwise, they will be actually put uh, labeled as TBD, which will be carried over to the round three. In round three, which was taking place between April and July 2016, uh, we asked the panelists to review the results of round two and re-rate the remaining bin body of knowledge line items based upon their interpretation of the ag aggregated perceptions of the panelists. Um, in round three, we also took the feedback from the um, a panelist, which was originally uh, referred to the length of the second round um, questionnaire being too long. So we were able actually to uh, create a four sub-surveys instead of one gigantic survey uh, to conduct the Delphi study. Uh, the criteria for those sub-criteria, uh, sub-surveys basically is they are divided by level implementation. Um, so the response rates for sub survey one was actually 63% and uh, sub survey number two was 55 and sub survey three, 59 and uh, four, 59 as well. Um, we were able to actually produce a heat map for quick pattern identification of the consensus achieved on the bin body of knowledge line items there. So this is the excerpt for the final descriptive statistics we are able to gather. Um, as a matter of fact, as you see here, the key on the top corner here says this particular table refers to the level of implementation at planning level. We're looking at the designers only, we're looking at the full performance level, and we're looking at the organizational general knowledge. And as you see here in this table, we have all the basic statistics, including the maximum mean, um, minimum mean, medium mode, and the standard deviation, first quartile, uh, third quartile, and interquartile range as well as the percentage of each um, uh, Likert scale scores, as well as the uh, aggregated Likert scores. And most importantly, we are able actually to identify whether or not an uh, item has accomplished what level of agreements. And the LLO2, LLO2 indicates the previous round uh, accomplished LLA. And uh, LLA round three is the final level agreements accomplished for that a specific bottom knowledge line item. So this looks pretty busy, but it shows the aggregated um, bin bottom knowledge and line item final level agreements accomplished. And uh, each one of the uh, level implementation, as well as each different industry sectors, different performance levels, and the different type of knowledge were represented in this big um, map here. Um, to make it easier to look at, we actually was able to actually provide some um, general heat map here to give some keys for you to be able to um, quickly and accurately interpret the results. So first we would, would like to provide this level of agreement color codes there. And as you see there, different color codes will present different level of agreement uh, description. And the heat map column keys, which refers to top Okay, of the columns of the heat map. So DO, which means uh, the designer at organizational general, and a DP means designer project specific, and CO means contractor organizational general, and a CP means we look at a contractor project specific knowledge. And also we have the different level of performance here, entry level, and a middle level, and a full performance level. So for each line item there, we really went through several different scenarios, depends on uh, which industry sector we're looking at, uh, which type of knowledge we're looking at, which level of performance we're looking at. So this um, big heat map provides some quick um, uh, results and actually provides some quick patterns you can identify. Uh, for instance, for the majority of those line items there, uh, the panelists, actually the DAFO panelists or subject matter experts were able to achieve higher consensus level for the full performance 
And as the performance level uh, reduces, the level of consensus actually also reduces, which is kind of interesting. And we're also able to find identify some of the atoms we don't we don't really have achieved uh, any consensus level. For instance, the knowledge of scripting, knowledge of programming, which is kind of intriguing, considering how important or actually how popular uh, the computational modeling is becoming today. So those slides actually provide a little enlarged view for each specific level level of implementation. For instance, this is a level of implementa implementation at a planet level. And this is basically a zoomed in view of the heat map you looked at a moment ago. Again, those keys hopefully is going to help you to better understand what exactly does this heat map represent. So this is coordinate it, this is manage it, and this is do it level. Now, so since we already have this preliminary bin technology framework established, the next question will be. Um, how useful it is, and even, uh, even how the question may be how to use this, um, how to actually make it meaningful to the different users, including the professional community as well as the educational community. So, we were able to actually come up with three different use cases. For instance, the use case for education, the use case for talent acquisition and recruiting, as well as the use case for professional certification credentialing. And we're going to discuss about each different scenario for those different use cases. When it comes to use case for education, it is very important for us to understand that college education, college BIM education is actually going to be uh, critical to um, educate or cultivate the BIM competency um, and actually to provide the uh, talent that is going to perform the BIM tasks in the future. So what we propose here is we utilize a, something called backward design pedagogy approach that we utilize the AIC BIM body of knowledge itself as the uh, final results, or actually the end results there. And um, it will actually be utilized as the desired results. And um, then we're gonna do, trying to determine based upon the re results, what are the acceptable evidence showing that students actually have, you know, uh, already uh, gained those knowledge and skills and abilities. So then go one more step back, that is how we actually plan learning experience and instruction in order to actually develop or actually um, to develop, accomplish those learning outcomes. Um, we are actually, the key here is actually we are going to develop uh, AIC BIM biotechnology supplemental guidelines. That guideline is really gonna help to clarify and elaborate each one of the AIC BIM biotechnology line items there to make it really useful. So the idea is actually in the future, if um, uh, academic program would like to adopt BIM in the curriculum and uh, they have certain goals in terms of what kind of competency you want to develop uh, for among their students, they can go back to this ARC BIM of knowledge and follow different examples and be able to create a curriculum to address those specific um, learning outcomes and come up with the uh, learning tutorials as well. Now, the use case for talent acquisition and recruiting is uh, fairly um, uh, interesting. And we look at different um, business roles and services that companies would like to utilize this particular BIM of knowledge. So we're looking at whether or not this business is actually designer, contractor, owner, operator, or what kind of like you know critical BIM implementation they're trying to utilize, and what kind of like recruiting hiring target do they have, and what kind of level of BIM positions looking at. Um, the example given here is, let's say we have a contractor, uh, they want to implement BIM at manager level, and what uh, really looking at the project-oriented tactical near-term um, personnel who can actually champion the BIM um, project team. Then the level of position they're hiring is really about middle level uh, intermediate. With those information, we can actually go back to that specific um, area of the BIM technology and is able to extract this line of um, BIM body of knowledge items. So this could potentially provide some um, um, guidance about the HR people, how they're actually gonna draft their job post and actually be able to hire the desired uh, talent. So this is a really uh, pretty handy uh, way of using this AIC BIM body of knowledge. The last use case is actually professional certification of credentialing, or well, usually, um, by definition, but knowledge really captures and structurally uh, represents the broad spectrum of concepts, nomenclatures, as well as best practices commonly acknowledged by 
practitioners in the field. It's often refer, uh, referenced as the standard and benchmark for competency evaluation and typically forms the premises and foundation for professional certification and credentialing. Besides, there are similar and successful programs, um, for instance, the Better Building Workforce Guideline, uh, directed by uh, National Institute of Building Science and Department of Energy via the Commercial Workforce Credentialing Counseling. They utilize a very similar approach adopted by this particular research, they were able to actually be able to come up with certifications for being energy auditors, being, uh, being commissioning, uh, building commissioning professional, energy manager, as well as building operations professionals. So the action items in terms of what we need to do next step is first, we're gonna produce um, the uh, final report, which you will see go with this video. Um, second is actually we're trying to uh, spend more time to further develop the AIC BIM Biotechnology Dictionary and the specifications. The document is going to be really, really important because that will give the actual detailed guidance for the uh, potential users to truly understand what does each BIM Biotechnology line item represent and uh, what are the possible use cases it represents and what are the um, performance matrix and how actually what kind of measures can we utilize to assess their performance etc so um, there is an example uh, being um, present uh, pro um, provided here uh, this is this example was actually demonstrated at the 11th BIM academic symposium and it's basically it's a small work workshop that focuses on a couple of different BIM line items there that people can discuss and actually keep working on um, so you can go to this link and uh, take a look at those videos and see um, how we actually went through the process to develop those dictionary and specifications. Future direction. Um, current, refer, uh, current efforts refer to the final report as well as uh, we're going to create a Tableau, uh, Tableau dashboard for public review and comments will be available really in June uh, 2017. And the link will be uh, provided um, with this video as well. Uh, the future efforts, we're looking at possibilities to develop BAM learning modules in collaboration with academic partners. And uh, we're gonna try to conduct some industry case studies and also trying to identify external funding opportunities for DotCom workshop to review and update this bit of knowledge. We always believe as BAM is gaining a lot of momentum and uh, the use case of BAM is expanding um, exponentially so the, the BIM mod knowledge is actually uh, evolving all the time. So we do see there is a need to uh, keep reviewing and updating the BIM mod knowledge now and then. And uh, that's why we need your help. So if you are interested in either in using the BIM mod knowledge or actually you want to participate in this efforts, uh, please contact me and my time contact information is right there. And you can also join the AIC LinkedIn group uh, as well as follow our ResearchGate project page. Thank you very much for your time, and I wish you had a time to actually read through the report and let us know what you think. And the Tableau uh, interactive um, dashboard is gonna help you to better explore results uh, in a way that you would like to. So if you have any comments and any suggestions, please don't hesitate in either leave us comments in LinkedIn, ResearchGate, or actually send me an email, or give me a call and we can chat about. Thank you very much.